Welcome, everybody, to today's episode of the Clean Leather Baseball Podcast. We are privileged to have with us one of the top pitching coaches in the country, Corey Mascaro, now at Wake Forest. Welcome, Coach. Uh, Coach Moose, and how's the how's everything going at the new job? Started early July, right? Yeah, I started early July. The first month or so, I, I wasn't here. I was out recruiting, you know. Um, but I've been on campus every day for about two months now, and uh, it's a pretty cool place, you know, like um, – this is a place where you have no shortage of resources, right? So like if you can't get guys better and you can't get guys to perform at a high level, you just have to look in the mirror, you know, because it's on you. Like we have every resource possible here. So I, I'm not, I'm not much, I don't believe in excuses. I believe in um, uh, solutions. So uh, at this place, there's really no excuses. You know, um, we have everything. And we have great people around us and there's some talented players. So now we have to get guys to understand the intricacies of pitching, competing and winning. Um, and I think that nowadays this is often confused with, you know, development, individual development. Uh, and there's a big distinction between the two. So that's what we're working on here right now. Um, it's exciting. These kids are very bought into it. They're very hungry to learn. And uh, hopefully I can give them what they need so we can become winners, you know? You got the top biomechanics pitching lab on campus in the, in the country there. You've got, you know, Mark Seaver, one of the best uh, strength coaches in the, in the country. The, those all things, I guess, that, that go into your head and looking at, you know, it, playing ACC baseball, you know, all things that, you know, just kind of going through your head through the process, I guess. Yeah. I've never been driven by conference to be honest with you. Like I always, I'm, I'm like, I like baseball. I don't care about conferences. I know it sounds very hypocritical because now I'm in probably the second best conference in the country. Um, but I've never been in one of those leagues before, you know? So like, that's not me. That's not what motivates me. What motivates me here and what's really fascinating is like, I, I literally learn something new every day. Um, the lab is amazing, but it's not just the lab. It's the people there, you know, um, Mike McFerrin, our lab coordinator makes me better every day. Um, my, uh, Mark Schieber makes me better every day. Jeff Strom, our trainer every day makes me better. Dr. Nicholson, um, Garrett Bullock, Joey Malott. Um, these are all people that, you know, run our lab and they're some of the brightest minds you're ever going to meet. So they challenge me to think differently. They allow me to grow. Um, and it allows me to, with all these resources here, it also allows me to concern, like really focus on the intricacies of baseball, you know, like, kind of everywhere I've been, I kind of have to wear multiple hats, you know, and there's so much support here that I can delegate things. Like I can go to Mark. I mean, yet literally yesterday I was working on a Google doc with, with Mark and um, we were talking about in, in our uh, Mike McFerrin, our lab coordinator. And we were talking about like, okay, from all of our biomechanical assessments, what do we see in their deliveries? And Mark has like for each column, like what do we assess in our mobility screenings? What do we assess in our on-base use screenings? What do we assess from the weight room? What does our SPARTA test tell us? Uh, what do we see in their deliveries? And we have this kind of working Google document where everybody has an understanding. You know, that's something that like I'd never seen before, you know, and this is a daily conversation that's had you know, in, a, in a, you know, about 30 minutes here, I'm going to go to another meeting where I'm gonna, we're going to be breaking down each guy. Like, okay, what does this guy need to do for his development plan? What does this guy need to do? What does this guy need to do? And the beauty of it is everybody that I'm talking about is in the same building here, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, I just walk out the hall, turn to the next office and everybody's there. So we're constantly communicating and we're constantly working on those things. And it allows me to grow as a coach and it allows, I think our players hopefully to be the best version of themselves. I think sometimes when you have that many resources though, it gets really player centric and everybody really starts to like focus on velocity and movement patterns, which is great. You know, we were second in the country in fastball velocity last year, at like 93, six, but there's so much more to the game than throwing hard, you know, like you have to understand how to hold runners. You have to understand how to hide your grips. You have to disguise your science systems. You have to work in tempo. You have to be able to throw off speed pitches and fastball counts. 
You have to work to both sides of the plate. You have to command your fastball. Um, you have to have a good pickoff move. You have to vary your times and holds. You have to defend your position on the bunt. You have to know which, what guys can run and what guys can't. It goes on and on and on. And if you want to be a winner, that stuff matters, right? And so because we have all these people here that are so good and so skilled at their jobs, it allows me to focus on baseball stuff. So I'm putting more and more and more of my effort into making sure that our guys aren't a one-sixth of the plate, making sure that we can all pick under one, making sure that we're not giving away all of our pitches. You know, and it sounds like, you know, nowadays nobody wants to hear about that stuff on Twitter. Nobody cares about that stuff on social media. That's the difference between winning and losing. Right. That's what win games. A hundred percent, man. That, that That's, <clears throat> and honestly, you kind of went into it, Corey, is like part of my struggle is like we have just as a game, we have all of these resources and like the, literally a lab and, and people that went to school to do this stuff, like, how how do pitchers balance, you know, throwing a pitch and then looking at a, at a track man screen or a Rob Soto screen to see what was what and or having just that overall feel of 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 how to pitch themselves and, and, and how to compete and whatnot. And the compete thing, you know, so some of it can be learned, I feel like. But some of it's like, you know, you need guys who naturally are, are just straight dogs. So it's like how do you balance and, and, and what's more important? Like the biggest thing I always ask me, like what's more important, like the analytical side or the mental side, right? Like, always, like, it's always the mental side, but I look at it like everything matters, right? One of the things I say all the time is everything's important, nothing special, right? Like if you can go out there and you're holding runners and you do everything right, but you're like 85, 86 with no stuff. Yeah. The margin of error is pretty small. Can you keep somebody in the game? Sure. But it's going to be tough to win. You go out there and you're 93, 95, and, and you have a hammer breaking ball, but you're tipping all your pitches and you can't hold runners. Well, it's going to be a track meet, and eventually we're going to get the second, and we're going to get you, right? So, like, everything matters, you know? But I think this is what I, I've come to understand as a coach. It's – and this is – I took this from Rob Vaughn, who I love dearly, and he got this from – um Matt Deggs. Matt Deggs is one of his mentors, but he told this to Coach Vaughn, and I really believe this. And as I look through my coaching career, I realize that this is this is literally the most important thing. It's not what you preach, it's what you tolerate, right? So it's not what you say to these guys, it's how you hold the line. And one of the best I've ever seen at holding the line is Ed Blankmeyer. Like there's a reason why that guy won as much as he did because he always held the line. He held the line with his coaches. He held the line with the ops guy. He held the line with the SID. He held the line with the AD. You know, like, that guy holds the line on everybody. I always say, like, if, if Ed Blankmeyer walked in the room with the Pope, the Pope would start listening to Ed Blankmeyer. Like, I swear. Like, I'm not even kidding. Awesome. Like, like, that's just how he is. Like, he just commands right. respect from everybody. I remember one time Omar Minaya's son was on campus, and Omar came up to, to Blanks and was like, telling stories about blanks but I say, yeah, yeah yeah we gotta get to practice okay omar and like omar was like the gm of the mets at the time and i was just like <laughs> like i'm like omar's coming to like you know talk in blank he's like yeah we got practice we gotta get to practice we gotta get back be i just gotta get better today we gotta get better today you know oh, but like to me like the consistency of what you value so if you value winning you need to track winning and everything you do everything needs to be tracked so, like, I, we have all these analytics people. One thing I do is I make them track wins and losses. We split the teams up every week, and we post who's got more wins. Simple. Like, oh, you didn't pitch today? Well, you were on the black team. Did you win or lose? You want to you get guys to value winning? Track and everything you do. You want guys to compete? Track every bullpen. Very simple. Like, so, yeah, we have all the, the track man stuff, but I also have all these guys tracking, like, spot percentage, strike percentage, leg times. We just post it like so oh, everything's everything's a competition. Not everything, but but everything. Everything's, everything's competition. a competition. What do you mean? Everything's a competition. How you do anything is how you do everything. Right. Like, have you ever talked to me one time ever, Kev, where I didn't feel like I was like locked in or had juice to talk to you? <laughs> Literally, no. It's, and that's no, reason, no. reason number nine thousand why I love you. 
But like, my thing is like, if you're going to do something, be good at it. Care. Don't do it half-assed. What's the point of doing something half-assed? Right? Like, and so if you want guys that have the right mentality, it's like, listen, like there's a right way to do something and there's a wrong way to do something, you know? Um, not to get like super sappy because it kind of hit me a little bit hard yesterday. Rob actually, Rob Vaughn actually texted me this because we read this book together and we really liked this guy, but Trevor Moad passed away yesterday. He wrote what? the book. It takes, yeah, yeah. He passed away. He, um, he was actually battling cancer for two years. And, um, wow, I didn't know that he, didn't, he like, didn't make it public knowledge or anything like that, but Trevor Moad is awesome. He's one of the best sports psychologists and mental skills coaches maybe ever. Um, Russell Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. He's great. I mean, he loved them. And so we read that book at Maryland together. And then we actually used that book as our team book this year at wake. It takes what it takes, but um, he, he says it all the time, right? Like there's, it's the illusion of choice, right? Like there's no choice to being great. Everybody knows what it takes to be great, but, and there's not like a secret recipe to it. The recipe is be the same guy every day. Don't take shortcuts. Value the things that are important to you and track them and see progress. And if you do those things and you are consistent with those things, eventually you will create a culture of people that also care about those things. What, pro what the problem is today is there's no accountability to the things that matter, right? Like in travel baseball, you can go from team to team to team. You can now go from high school to high school to high school. Like kids go to four or five high schools now. And, and they're always to told now. Yeah. And now it's college to college. Exactly. With the transfer portal, you know? So like there's literally no accountability to the, like you want to develop as a person. You got to You got to You got to be told what you need to hear. Not what you want to hear. Yeah. The guy that probably improved me the most as a coach was blanks. He told me what I needed to hear all the time. Not what I wanted to hear. You know how many times he said something to me? I was like, that's, that's, that hurt. Or that's tough, but it made me better. And I wouldn't be, I wouldn't even be here today without that guy. But again, I go back to holding the line, right? He holds the line. He tells you what you need to hear. He's not worried about hurting your feelings. And he's not a jerk about it. Like he doesn't disrespect you. He's very respectful, but he tells you the stone cold truth constantly constantly so if you get a compliment from him it's worth its weight in gold because you're like oh damn i must have really did something good you know what i mean because yeah. like and you value it because it's like hey this is what it, this is how it needs to be done there's a right way and the wrong way you know and so for me like yeah, that's how you distinguish it too right you just tell kids flat out hey man you're worried about all the wrong stuff right now you're worried about all the wrong stuff uh, the analogy I use all the time, like, yo, you can hit 95 and you got 20 inches of vertical, but, you know, you can't hit water if you fell out of a boat. What does that do for us? You might as well go to the carnival and win a stuffed animal. It's the same thing. You know, like. I think that's that's kind of what my my thought process was, because there's so like you said before, there's so much emphasis on velo on on the, the stuff. You know, it's like that's what's taught. And you obviously, I'm sure you see like guys when they get to you, sometimes it's amazing. Cause I know what it was for me. It's like, wow, they really don't know some of the really, really basic stuff as far as pitching that you mentioned before, controlling the running game, you know, uh, it, it, burying your holds and, and just feel just overall pitching feel. Um, but, but it is, it has to be everything. If you want to be elite, it has to be everything. You can't be, you can't have stuff and not the, the mental and, and little things. And you can't well, have a I want to touch base. I hate to cut you off, but I, you just reminded me of something. I think it's super important that, that kids need to understand. One of the biggest problems I see is kids get so focused of their internal cueing over the rubber, like what movements are going to make, right? Like, did they get to a proper hinge? How deep yep. was their hinge? Mm -hmm. Are they applying ground force? Like, do they have separation? What is their lead arm doing? You know, what is their hand positioning doing? They get so engulfed in what they're doing over the mound that they lose the focus of being over the plate. And what I think needs to be understood by all is you can take what you're doing over the mound and translate it to being over the plate by making it external and how you move, right? So if you talk about like 
how does the body actually rotate? The body is rotating in a linear and linearly, right? Like, so you're, it's rotational, but it's directional straight, right? Mm -hmm. So what kids don't understand what I find more often than not is like, if they understand how to move through a reference point, okay, their command will grow exponentially. And with that couple, coupling a pre-pitch routine so they can clear thoughts, understand their thoughts, understand their mind and move through space on every pitch they throw. And it, what's funny is you'll actually see movement patterns clean up. You'll see yeah. command clean up, you know, and that's the mental game, right? People think that the mental game is all like just telling yourself positive things. People think the mental game is all just like visualizing success. That all has a place, but visualizing success is like throwing plyo balls, right? Like, um, you know, doing breathing routines is like your J bands, you know, and, um, but your pre-pitch routine is like, it's kind of like pitching, you know what I mean? So like, when you think about all these factors, like if you don't have a pre-pitch routine, you don't have a mental game. If you don't do breathing, you're probably not ready to go before you do your mental game, you know, like nowadays there's kids that would never think of throwing without doing their J bands. You know, we need to prep our mind with our breathing routines, you know, and that's the, the stuff that I think people have to realize too, is like so much of it is systemization. The most successful people in the world create systems, right? They have morning routines. They have routines throughout their day. One of the things I talk about all the time with my players is like, you only have so much energy in a day. There's only so much time. There's only so much energy. So you need to learn how to systemize your development. And if you're going to systemize proper development, it has to be holistic. It can't just be on your delivery. It can't just be on your strength. It has to be on your mind, on your schoolwork. So you have less stress on what you're eating, on how you're sleeping, on how you're hydrating, on, you know, what you're learning. And, and, and it, are you spending time in thought? Are you spending time on your pre-pitch routine? And you look out and you, you got to go, you got to go macro with it. Right. So you got to look at like the big picture over time. Okay. What's my development plan? What am I doing for these months? What am I doing for these weeks? What am I doing for these days? And then you start putting it on the calendar. Like, okay, I'm doing, I'm going to fill this bucket here. I'm going to fill this bucket here. And you know what? This bucket's missing. I got to do a little bit more on this bucket. Right. And you start doing that over time. You're like, you know what? I'm going to do this with high energy and focus daily. And there's nothing you can't do at that point. You couple that with getting constructive feedback constantly. The game gives you constructive feed feedback. Ball don't lie. Ball tells you everything you need to know. Um, your coaches, if they care about you and love you, they give you constructive feedback. And then that's how you grow. And that's, it's simple. It's a simple thing. And all this stuff is simple. It's not complicated. The challenge is, do you prioritize it and love it to do it with high energy every day? with high focus and intent every day because if you do you're going to get good you're yeah. going to get good it's that simple and need yeah. to have that clear vision of where you want to be right because without that then it is all micro and it's all you know nothing's connected no doubt i mean i was talking about science yesterday to our pictures for like 30 minutes right going through our science systems and stuff like that and i said listen here's why you, we need to master our science system right because you guys look at it as like something you need to do. We need to start looking at it as chess, right? If we can master our science systems and fluidly change at will, we can start to tell when people are trying to get us and we can use it against them. We can be two steps. Ahead. Now we just created a competitive advantage. If we created a competitive advantage where they don't know what our signs are and we keep them chasing their tail constantly, we just created a competitive advantage. So something as simple that like kids don't care about they're like, oh, this is eyewash or this is boring. I don't want to do this. They need to create the competitive advantage in that, right? Yeah. Everything you do, there can be a competitive advantage created. How you talk to somebody, how you meet somebody, the interaction you have, um, the drill you're doing, the book you're reading. Like, I don't care. Like, whatever it is, create a competitive advantage. Find a way to create a competitive advantage. And when you start to do that, it becomes super fun, you know? And when other guys around you start to be like that and they start to drive that, then everybody's level raises, you know, like it, everybody just raises the level because you don't want to be the jabroni in the room. That's not bringing it, you know, right. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that that's awesome. Yeah, I hope I hope kids were, were listening are listening because to me it, it it just shows what what elite baseball is. No matter where you are, right? No matter where you are, if you want to be if you want to be a leader, be successful. But obviously, if you want to play at, at some of these schools like a Wake Forest that you know or like these schools that people like to talk about that they want to play at compared to doing what it takes to, to, to get there. But, you know, Corey, one thing I, wa I wanted to ask you was um, kind of along the same things, like, and, and, and I've always respected you. I think you're one of the, the best recruiters in the country. You're obviously a good judge of talent and, and, and uh, you know, makeup and stuff like that. Um, but you're also relentless with it. But, if you were to, I think, I think the recruiting process is like one of the biggest problems we have in, in, in baseball, um, whether it's the actual rules of the NCAA or what these players are being told in their everyday lives from businesses to their travel coach, to their high school coach, to their parents or whatever it is. And now you throw a global pandemic into it and it's gotten that much worse. So from everybody who said, okay, recruiting, how do I get exposed? How do this? And that? Like, if you're a 24, a 23, a 22, even a 22, whatever, whatever it is, um, like, what would be your biggest advice regarding getting recruited, get, I guess, getting exposure and, and things like that goes just because I know, and I, you know, from my app, and I would always hear it from the player and the parent. Right. In my travel ball days, when you recruit some of my travel ball guys and the things I would say wouldn't always sink in. So like, what would your advice be some of the, some, to all those kids out there that are like, how do I get seen? How do I get so recruited? I'm going to answer this in two parts. I'm going to answer your question first. Then I'm going to tell you how I changed my philosophy. OK, so first. Get better. Everybody worries about exposure way too much. Thank you. OK. Stop worrying about exposure. Just get better. Just right. Like, and this is the first one of the first things I say to most people when we talk about like the recruiting process. I go through this little game. I'm like, all right, where did Aaron Judge go? And everyone's like, I don't know. I'm like Fresno State. Fresno where did Jay Grom go? Stetson. You know, where did Corey Kluber go? Stetson. Where did uh, Jay Hap go? Northwestern. Where did JD Martinez go? Nova Southeastern. Yeah. You know, on and on and on. You can keep going on and on. Like. And, and the reality is, like, if you turn a game on TV, like, guys are from high school, colleges you never heard of, JUCOs, low-level Division ones, SEC schools, ACC schools. They're from, um, you know, Venezuela and the Netherlands. So just get off that train, number one. Okay, that's number one. Get better. Number two, what are you using baseball for? Is it so you can put out an Instagram post? Or are you trying to become the best version of yourself? Because if you're trying to become the best version of yourself, you need to challenge yourself. You need to be in the right academic fit. You need to be in the right culture. You know, that right culture. I'll give you a great example. Um, James Clear wrote a book called Atomic Habits. Okay. It's one of my favorite books. I strongly encourage anyone to read it. And if you can't read the book, he's got a lot of TED Talks that are really great. But this guy was a bad high school player, a terrible high school player. And he got hurt. He broke his jaw. Somebody threw a bat, hit him in the face. And he was like really seriously hurt in high school. Wired, jaw wired shut, lost a ton of weight. And he went to uh, a D3 school in Ohio. I forget the name of it, but it was a really high academic D3 school. And he started to create habits and systems to get stronger and you know learn about life and so on and so forth. Eventually, he became a captain. He became an academic All-American at a D3 school. But throughout this process, he learned a lot about himself and he learned systems and habits. He's now written two books. Both are New York Times bestsellers. He's a multi, multi, multi millionaire. Okay. And he dominates life. And I would argue that if he didn't go to the D3 school and learn how to value his systems and habits and learn who he was as a person, there's no way he's a multi millionaire right now. But his priorities were in the right place to take baseball as a vehicle to allow him to be the best version of himself. He wasn't out there going hashtag D one bound blessed. He was saying, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to try to figure out how I can be the best version of myself. I'm going to figure out what I need to do to be better than I was yesterday. 
I'm going to figure out how to feed the soul, you know? And that's really what baseball is. Baseball is your vehicle for so many people. Kev, I mean, where would you be without baseball right now? You'd probably be on the side of the street or something like that right now. You know what I mean? Who knows where I'd be right now? Baseball is our vehicle to allow us to express our passion, to allow us to keep growing. There's no way I'm reading a book without baseball. Are you kidding me? Yeah, man. I read, I read every, I read all the time. But if it wasn't for baseball, I wouldn't read. Yeah. I'd probably be selling cars or something like that. And I'm already a little chunky, but I'd be like real chunky if I was if I wasn't in baseball. You would you know sell I mean? the shit out of cars though. You'd sell I would sell the shit out of cars, but yeah. I wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't be fulfilled. Right. And so, like the problem I have is like everybody looks at things from a superficial level. We're in this, I've said this on other podcasts stuff, but we're in this Instagram world where it's like, look at me, look what I can do, you know? Um, and like what I think people stop worrying about exposure, like just get over it. You know what I mean? Like get better, figure out how to be better and not just a better baseball player, a better thinker, um, you know, more passionate, you know, better student, better time manager, figure out what baseball can give you. Stop trying to take things from baseball, you know, learn about the lessons baseball gives you. When we go, when we go, I mean, the problem is like when you go play little league, like so many people are like, oh, my son's gonna get a college scholarship. Like, get off of it. Like, you don't sign your kids up in these. Like, I just signed my kid up for like this little soccer league. You know, like he runs around. He doesn't even know he. I think he tried to tackle like six kids the first game he played. <laughs> and he has no idea what he's doing. And the reason we sign him up for soccer is so he can learn how to be in a social setting. Right. And that's why we did it. We wanted soccer and interaction to learn how to be in a social setting and learn how to follow instructions from someone other than mom and dad. Yeah. Know There's your value why. there. Know and your like, why is, is the big way to say it now. You know, say it know, again? Know, know your why, right? Know why you're yeah, doing it. Simon Sinek. It's my favorite book ever. You know, like, starts with why. 100%. Yeah. Dude, and everybody's so why is like, how cool is my Instagram post going to yeah. be? How much clout am I going to get? How many likes am I going to get? Dude, get off of it. That's eyewash. It's eyewash, dude. Like, get better. Like, grow as a human being. What are you going to learn from the game? What are you going to learn from sport? It's so um, it's so tough. It's so tough, though, man. Because like, I feel like people are in a are in a really tough situation because, like, so if I talk about social media, it's like social media is bullshit. Like Instagram's bullshit and everything else like that. But then there's a side of it where it's like, oh man, like, but for business, like, how's my business? How's this and that? Like, we talked the other day about about the recruiting um, with eighth and ninth graders committing to schools and everything else like that, and how how ridiculous it is. And 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 and, and I said to Olsh, I said Olsh, I said coaches don't like that. You know, I, no. said, I, said, I said I said these top coaches don't like the process. But unfortunately, when you're at an SEC or an ACC school or whatever it is where you kind of have to win, right, it, it, to a certain degree, you have to win or, or to elevate your career. Or, well, or, so this, or this brings me to my next topic, actually. So this is the second part of the question. So we're in this, like, really tough time, right, that, like, everybody's trying to scoop up players and everybody's got a different philosophy and system, right? but everybody's trying to scoop up players. Um, hold on one second. Tom, Tommy Walter or, or, or Billy Slint? Yeah, I'll send it to you. I'm on a, a Zoom podcast thing right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll hit you up in a minute. <laughs> I get the pitching rotations out to Walt. So um, I love Walt. Tell Walt I said what's up, man. What I a will. staff. What a staff at Wake right now. Man. So I got like five more minutes and I got to get in this meeting, but – my point to this here is it's a challenge for everybody, right? And I kind of feel like I've used this analogy before, but I feel like we're like right around 2008 when the housing market crashed and everybody was getting all these subprime loans for mortgages because they could. So everybody's buying really expensive homes and things like that. And then everybody went bankrupt and the economy went, you know, sideways. Yeah. And the people, that had enough capital were able to buy all these foreclosed homes really cheap and they made a killing. And so the chaos of what's happening right now 
I've completely changed my recruiting philosophy. So during COVID, I actually got a lot of recruits and we kind of killed it at Maryland. And the reason why I was comfortable in doing this, and I granted majority of what I was recruiting was pitchers. So it's easier with pitchers, but everybody that we talk to is good. You know how hard it is to differentiate between right. like 30, 24s that all have projection and they all throw 86. Like, what do we, I don't know. How, I'm not that smart. Like I, right. they all look pretty good to me. Like they all could be throwing 95. I don't know. You know? So I stopped trying to like figure out who was the most talented one. And I started putting tasks in front of them and I would just challenge them constantly because I would just want to see who responded. And I would take the ones that gravitated towards the task that gravitated towards the workload that gravitated towards constructive criticism. And that they wanted to, they had that growth mindset. They had, they, they wanted a challenge. They, they sought out information. They wanted to compete. They wanted to build something, right? Because ultimately those are the guys that are going to really succeed with, with me and my system. Who show so for me, it wasn't, it's not about, great. say that again. Guys who show evidence of wanting to be great. Yeah. And earning it, right? Like not just telling me like, oh, I want to do this because your school is this, blah, blah, blah. Right. No, dude, like earn it. Like let's earn it. And and, and come here because you believe I can help you. And I believe you believe in what we're doing. You know, let's make it all about that. Because the prerequisite, I always say this, like talent is like, you know, when you go to the amusement park ride, and you have to be certain level of height to get on the amusement park ride. That's the talent. Like that's right. the price of admission. Like everybody's good. Everybody's good. So what are we talking about here? And the whole, the whole rant I went on earlier, like, that, no, that's not talent based. That's mentality based. That's heart based. That's desire based. That's buy in, right? So if if you can get more guys that believe in that, and the problem is that's a lot of work. It's really hard. You're not always going to be right. It's who do they surround themselves with? What are the people they surround themselves with? What's the systems around them? It's a lot of work that goes into this, you know. And I don't have all the answers for that, but I think that if you make decisions and actions predicated on what you believe it doesn't ensure success and it doesn't ensure that you're right but it gives you your greatest chance to be successful and more importantly you can put your head on the pillow at the end of the night and be like i did it the right way i did it my way i did it what i believed in you know and that's the most important piece because like nobody knows what's going to happen next you know if we're chasing success if we're chasing you know accolades that stuff's fleeting, right? But if you're chasing like being a better version of yourself, John Wooden said this all the time. Like the goal was never to win a national championship. The goal was for that team to be the absolute best at who they were and what they did. If that meant winning a national championship, it meant winning a national championship. Be the best of what you can do. And, and, and again, I'm going on all these tangents, but we talked about Simon Sinek with It Starts With Why. He wrote another book called The Infinite Game. And he talks about that like with Apple. Like Apple's goal wasn't to have the market share. Apple's goal was to change the world, to make products so simple, a baby could use them, you know? And, and, and that's where I think the difference is like when every choice and everything you make is about like, how do you be better at what everything, like at what everything, you know, like how do you manage your time better? How do you do better in school? How do you talk to people better? How do you deal with failure better? How do you, you know, hold, you know, whatever it is. And that's, that's what I, that's why I do this. That's my why I want to use baseball as that vehicle so I just recruit kids that believe what I believe straight up Simon Sinek. I just, and I, I gotta, I gotta thank Rob Vaughn for that. Cause Rob put me on to Simon Sinek and you'll see like in these conversations, right. I've referenced Blankmeyer. I've referenced Rob Vaughn talk about energy, Scott Loazzo and Jason King, two guys that I, I played yeah. for Kinger and I, and I coach with Scotty. Those guys are the most competitive, energetic guys on the planet. Like they're relentless, you know? So for me, like, that's why you have to have the right people in the room because they like, if you care, you'll get better around those people. They'll make you your best. Yeah. yeah cool. And so for me, like everything I've done is the people around me have made me better. You know, Rob Vaughn made me better and blank Meyer made me better. Scotty Loazzo made me better. Jason King made me better. And honestly, like I'm at Wake Forest because coach Salento recruited me in college. 
And I had that relationship with him. So it's all about the relationships. It's all about like, you know, how these people make you grow and, and, and and it's bigger than, you know, Jeter just said this the other day, it's bigger than baseball. You know what I mean? It's bigger than that. And when you start to understand that it's bigger than baseball, that's when you have a chance to be awesome. So I, I I would give yourself a little bit, a little bit more credit because one thing you probably forget this and I'll, I'll be quick with it. You actually sent me a document like six years ago. I, you were at St. John's and it's just, it was called like, it was like brief things said like my mental training guide. And it was just a list of books, YouTube clips, movies, things like that. And I've been on the phone with you before in the past and you're like, oh, wait, hold on. This is a recruit calling me. I got to send him. I got to send him a, 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 a link that I told him to read or something like that. I got to I got to send him like this. You did you did that years ago. So, I mean, dude, it's so awesome. It's all part of the process that you surround yourself with. But I still have that, bro. And it's like a lot of the same things we're talking about. You probably don't even remember that. Um, well, I, I don't remember that specific thing, but like that's how I approach everything, you know, because I, I, like, I literally look at it like, listen, like if you're not going to look, I, I'll be honest, like I have a high motor. So I look at it and I'm saying to myself, like, if you're not going to keep up, don't come. That's what I tell kids all the time. Like, yo, if you just you want me to tell you you're good, don't come around me. Like, just don't because I'm not going to tell you you're good all the time. I'm going to tell you what you need to hear. And I'm going to care about you a ton. I'm going to have a high standard for you, but you're going to have to keep up. And that's what I look for. Like who's keeping up. Who's going to, who's going to make me go harder. Who's going to make me go faster. I don't want somebody that wants to be here. I want somebody that's going to make me keep raising my game. Right. So like, I only want to be around people that are going to raise my level, you know? And if you don't want to raise the level, go somewhere else where they tell you you're good. Go somewhere else that's going to tell you how great their facilities are and how awesome they are and how you're the best and you're going to play right away. You should go play for them. Because yeah. that ain't me. I it's ain't gold. doing it. Yeah, I know. We could do this for, for hours, but I, I think we're unfortunately out of time here for today. This just means you've got to come back. And, uh, 100%. Yeah, we'll do it again. I, I'm a little bit late to this meeting I get to anyway. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so thanks, let's – uh, we appreciate the time as always. It's Coach Corey Mascara, head uh, pitching coach at Wake Forest, one of the best in the country. Fortunate to uh, to spend some time with us today on uh, on clean leather, and uh, wish you the best this year. And we'll be uh, happy to get on as a, a guest as soon as possible again. Go, go yeah, I'll come back for sure. Anytime I can hang out with you guys, I'm I'm down. So thanks, Coach.